uh, try not to freak out about the impending tropical storm about to hit Georgia. Um, I've never been in a tropical storm before, so I don't know what to do. Um, I'm going to do what I always do, which is watch movies. So I watched uh, two movies in a short because if you um, have watched anything that's been released by Neon in the last year or so, all of their films come with a short, which I think is fantastic. And some are newer shorts and some are old shorts. And um, it's just, it's like, it's like back in the old days. Like I feel like I'm getting more for my ticket. But before that, I saw um, Columbus, which is directed, written and directed by somebody named Kogo Nada. I don't, I guess he's an artist or something. I should look him up. I don't know. He's one of those one named people. Um, it is a film set in Columbus, Indiana, not Columbus, Ohio, uh, known for its modernist architecture. Stars John Cho, Haley Lou Richardson, Parker Posey, Rory Culkin, and Michelle Forbes. Um, Haley Lou Richardson's really the main star. She is a, a teen, maybe 20-year-old, who has stayed um, in, her, in town and not gone off to college um, because she's trying to take care of her mother who may or may not be addicted to meth. Her mother played by Michelle Forbes, who for the first few scenes I was like, why does she look so familiar? And then I realized who it was. She was Ro Laren on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, not Deep Space Nine, The Next Generation, well, partly on Deep Space Nine too. Um, Ro Laren's my favorite. I love her. She's very hot. So it was kind of nice to see her pop up in a movie. Apparently, I looked her up. She's been in a million things, and I just haven't seen any of them, so whoops. Um, John Cho plays an American who is currently working in Korea, known as Jin, who um, whose father was visiting Columbus, Ohio, when he had a stroke of some sort and is in the hospital in a coma. And so Jin has come to be with him either until he gets better or until he dies. And um, Parker Posey plays Jin's colleague and um, the object of, not Jin's colleague, Jin's father's colleague and the object of his affection when he was a teenager. Um, so John Cho's character and Haley Lou Richardson's character are like bookends of each other. They both have, they're both in Columbus because of their parents. They both have different relationships with their parents. Um, Casey really wants to stay with her mother. She feels very strongly about living her life for her mother. Jin, on the other hand, has not had a great relationship with his father and almost wishes his dad would just die and that it would probably be better for everyone involved if that happened. And that's like the opposite of how Casey feels about her mother. So the film really is a meditation on life and death and living your life for yourself and um, familial relationships and um, has a, a little bit of a Lost in Translation sort of feel with the two characters finding each other um, randomly. It's beautifully shot by Elisha, Elisha Christian and um, obviously they capture the modernist um, architecture beautifully. Uh, I wish, I, I feel like the film felt a little undercooked for me and and as beautiful as it was, I kept going, yes, and. And so I always hate it when a film makes me go, yes, and. Like, there's one thing when a film um, leaves you asking questions. It's another thing when I am when I watch a film and I'm like, okay, and the point was. Um, and kind of, I felt like this film was, and the point was for me. So that was uh, Columbus. The neon short was called New Balls, Please. It's from 2004. And it's about um, a champion at Wimbledon losing to a newcomer and them trying to outmasculinize each other. And it's hilarious and sweet. And a great um, preamble to the feature I saw, which was Eliza Hitman's Beach Rats. This is her second feature. She has a great short called Tomar Tonight, Forever's Gonna Start Tonight, which was followed by her first feature, It Felt Like Love, which was on Netflix and might still be. Beach Rats is her second film. It is so good. Um, it stars newcomer Harris Dickinson. And I think actually the entire cast is new. I didn't recognize any of these names. Um, Har Harris Dickinson plays a guy named Frankie. He's late teens, early 20s. Lives in Brooklyn all the way towards Coney Island. And 
he's conflicted about his sexuality. He's definitely testing the waters to see if he's gay. But even if, even when he does have sex with men, he doesn't claim to be gay. He doesn't think he's gay. Um, but he's he's testing the waters and not really coming out, but kind of talking to his family and friends a little bit about it, but not really. And then finds himself in a romance with a girl played by Madeline Weinstein, who very much has come on to him. And he's trying to be a, a heterosexual, and it's just not working. And um, you feel bad both for him, for because you just want to be like, dude, just lean into your gayness. And you feel bad for her because she has no idea why he's being such a bad boyfriend, and it's because he's, like, not. He's, he's too gay for this. Um, and it shows him sort of trying um, hookup sites and other things. And it's really more of a meditation on this character and his struggles to both sort of come to... Oh, uh, I also was going to say it's a great double feature with Columbus because it, um, Frankie's father has cancer and um, that's clearly having wreaking havoc on his emotional life on top of his um, inability to come to terms with his own sexuality and exploration of that sexuality. And so um, this one I really loved. I, I love her technique. It was shot by Aline Louvard, who um, shot, I believe, on 16mm. It's just beautiful. Um, and I feel like Eliza Hittman is uh, one of the best sort of place directors in that all her films take place in the same area and she captures a vibe. Whether that's the main vibe or her vibe from that area, she's definitely someone who's like, this is where my stories are and this is the place that I want to talk about and I'm going to populate characters in this place and explore all these different kinds of characters in this same place. And um, had a lot to say about performative heterosexuality and sort of the dangers of heteronormativity because he doesn't have any any gay friends, any gay family, any gay anything. And so he's sort of adrift because he doesn't have a gay anchor, if you will, to help him realize who he is, to express himself. He doesn't have the language to express himself. Um, but the way it's filmed, you can clearly see that he's so much more comfortable around men in in a sexual way than he is around women. And but he's, it's so far from where how he was raised, he's raised Catholic, that he just can't figure it out. And it's heartbreaking to watch. Uh, great, great lead performance from Harris um, Harry Dickinson. I would like to see him in more films. Um, just a beautiful film. It's going to be one of my favorites of the year, I think. So these films are both in limited release right now. You can probably find them in various art house cinemas. Uh, I definitely recommend, definitely recommend Beach Rats. Uh, I know a lot of other people really loved Columbus, so maybe I just I missed something. I don't know. But it's always good to see John Cho, so I'm going to say I recommend that just to see John Cho in a movie. Because Oh, you do other theme of both these movies. You see both of them. Uh, you see their butts in a shower. So if you want to do a butts in a shower double feature, this is a good one. And also, I should mention this, obviously. As someone who, who blogs about full frontal nudity in films, uh, Beach Rats has a lot of full frontal nudity, but it's all very naturally done. And that's the other thing I think that is great about the way Eliza Hittman shoots. Is she, she Her films are very sexual, but they're never um, objectifying in that se objectifying the sexuality. They, she never objectifies bodies. She very much um, just shoots it like you weren't even, like there wasn't even a camera there. Um, so I recommend both these films, but definitely, definitely Beach Rats. It was just fantastic.